Hey guys, what's going on? It's your favorite heating appliance. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the recent patch notes that were released for the game Rainbow Six Siege. First off, if you're interested in my thoughts on how Hibana and Echo will affect the meta, then be sure to check out my past video. I also talk about the map and other changes that come along with these new Japanese operators. I didn't wanna repeat myself just to increase my watch time, so I put a link in the description below to make it easier for you guys to check it out. So with that being said, let's delve into the goodies that Ubisoft has given us. In the all new free DLC Red Crow. So caliber based destruction now breaks apart the walls differently depending on what weapons you're using. In the past, Glass was the only operator that had this, but now all operator weapons open up the walls differently. Some people may find it unnecessary because it doesn't really change how we play. However, one of the core reasons this game is so successful is because of the destructibility in every single map. I've been killed by random holes that were made by accident from two rooms away. It may not be a change to the meta, but it shows how far the dev team is willing to go to make this game the best it can be. I mean that this game has almost been out for a full year and they're still adding destruction changes to the game. Speaking of destruction, there was a solution added that should fix wood debris from getting stuck on the edges of surfaces. This mainly happened when you meleeed a wooden barricade and part of the wood got stuck in it blocking your vision. So one of the biggest changes other than the new content is the game balancing update to the arms and necks of all hitboxes to all operators. Before Red Crow, all round shots to the limbs were a multiplier of 0.75. Now, all shots to the arms and hands will receive a one times damage multiplier. It does say limbs in the patch notes, which one would think that the legs are included since limbs are legs as well. But I tweeted It's Epi to clarify which limbs were affected and he confirmed it was the hands and arms only. According to the notes, the reasoning was that when a player was firing at an opponent's chest, chances are they'll hit the arms as well, and that they will will require one or two more rounds to kill that operator. They want the shots to hit the hands and arms more consistent with the damage dealt to the body. Basically, they want sprays to feel more consistent when aiming at the chest. Now I can see where this is all going. Now we all know that this game isn't focused around running and gunning like Call of Duty, but instead it's about holding angles and peeking when you have a general sense of where your opponent is. So now there is a bigger penalty for misstepping into an enemy angle because you will have less time to react due to the increased damage received, which is a good thing in a general sense. However, there is one major problem with this. At the moment, shield users are broken, especially the operator blitz. Go to shelf, man. Actually, you should be able to one-on-one -on -one him. Yeah, yeah, just one-on-one uh, -on -one him. Your blitz, you know? No, put, no need him, dude. Bomb. Push on, fl push on flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. What? what? Right through the shield. I mean, look at this clip. This guy shoots me in the shield and he gets a headshot for no reason. And this hasn't even been stated yet. The increase in damage to the arms is an indirect nerf to these shield operators due to the arms and hands being exposed behind the shield, as if Montaigne and Blitz don't have it bad enough at the moment. Another multiplier that was changed was the damage to the neck. There's a meme that's going around that talks about neck shots and how we miss the head even though we see the normal blood spray and head knockback when we shoot them in the head. Well, now, neck shots are considered headshots. Where it used to be 2.5 times the damage, it will now straight out kill you. Unless it's from a shotgun, of course. The headshot multiplier from shotguns have gone from 1.5 to 1. This means, guys, that it'll be a little bit more difficult to take your opponents down with the shotgun. I'm not sure if Ubisoft still feels that shotguns overpower or what. Here's a clip where I run and shoot at someone's neck and it only downs them. I thought you I thought you were gonna knife him. Oh, did you see that? As you can see, it clearly said headshot, and this is with the 1.5 damage multiplier. So who knows how shotguns will look. I think I'll have to do some testing soon. Other weapon balances that we have are the removal of the beloved ACOG on the sniper weapon SMG-11. Now I know many of us have died from this glorious weapon. Now this change affects two operators but really only hinders one. Sledge and Smoke are the only operators other than the recruit that can use this weapon. On one hand you have Sledge who has a great low recoil AR, the L85, 
which has an ACOG on it. And on the other hand, you have Smoke, who has the FMG-9 submachine gun without the ACOG. Now, I know some of you guys like the FMG, but at higher levels on the PC, most players use the shotgun for opening up holes in the map while retaining their SMG-11 as their primary. Now, this is a direct nerf to Smoke as opposed to Sledge, since Sledge has a pretty good primary. Now, my personal take on this whole debacle is that it was fine the way it was. But at this point, Ubisoft felt that they didn't want secondary to be used as primaries because they should be backups and I can understand that moving forward. I mean I'm sure they consulted various pros about the subject and while it may suck it is what it is guys. I was actually hoping for the ACOG to be moved to the FMG but it doesn't seem like that's gonna happen. Another weapon nerf was given to good old Blackbeard and Capital. The MK17 and Para will have a higher damage fall off. Beardface's damage was abnormally high so they toned him down a few notches. Now below is a chart of the old and new fall off damage of both weapons that are affected. I like the Blackbeard change, but then again, good players should always be aiming for the head. And I guess the neck now. So the damage fall off isn't too big of a deal to me. Kivetta was looked at as well and has received a buff in Red Crow. According to the statistics pulled by the devs, she was perceived as too weak. So they turned her up a notch on her sidearm. And it will now take most operators down with two shots to the chest within eight meters, which is a buff. It would normally take three to four, so I really like this change. But another question you guys are probably asking is, do you think she'll enter the meta? And while time can only tell since the meta is always evolving, I would actually say no. Reason being, Kaveta is a high risk, high reward operator. And while she can be good in some circumstances, she isn't as consistent as other operators. I really don't think Kaveta can take the place of other roamers such as Jaeger and Bandit because their gadgets and ACOGs are way too strong to give up. So while this buff may be great and all, I don't see her entering the ring in the pro scene. We also will be seeing another nerf to the recruit. For those new players out there, there was a nerf a while back where Ubisoft toned down the recruit shield since it had a faster movement speed than the other shieldies. Now we only get two barbed wires for the GSG9 recruits. Gone are the beautiful fun days of spreading 15 barbed wire around the objective. <laughs> while it does suck, I can see this being a problem because of my next topic since it slows down the attacker's push significantly. Now another huge change to this patch is the reduction of round time in ranked games. Along with the SMG 11 change, I believe that this topic can flip both ways in the community. While I can see how some players don't like this new change, I personally love it. I rarely play without a team and we all kind of know what the deal is. And we know what we're doing in any given round so we execute our jobs while pushing toward the objective. But on the other hand, what if you don't have a full team with communication and you need more time to divvy out the plan? Well Ubisoft stressed that this new change will be a test to see how it all works out. I don't expect it to ever go back to four minutes and I personally believe that this test is just an easier way of saying that this is happening while players get used to it. But then again, if there's a huge uproar, say after a month or two, that they don't like it, well, maybe it'll go back to four minutes. I do know, however, that most of the upper level ranked players are thoroughly enjoying three minute rounds, including myself. This change will not affect casual games and they will remain with the four minute round action phase. Player skill and matchmaking has been fine-tuned again as they make improvements to the overall rank system. This change was made so that players will get the rank they deserve. According to the patch notes, time play directly influenced the rank. And in some extreme and rare cases, players with an actual skill equivalent to a silver player could achieve a ranking as high as a platinum if they play long enough. This season player's seniority will not be added into the MMR because it shifted the player's rank inaccurately. Another change to MMR is the fact that cam callouts, jammer setups, and breach charges, and other things directly affect your personal MMR. So you receive plus 10 points every single time you do something like block a drone with a jammer or reinforce a wall. Well, Ubisoft stresses that if you want to rank up, you have to do everything you can to help your team win rather than just pushing to kill that rook that your teammates downed, which probably means that you'll receive more points if you do your job. And the community manager on Reddit clarified that this was also a way to reduce the number of carried players and ranked. So it looks like I'm now hashtag forever bronze, guys. The only other thing that was mentioned was that players were getting put up against super high ranks but that's all due to matchmaking constraints. So expect to face more diamonds and plats if you're gold and it's 2 a.m. on a Tuesday night. We also get more weekly challenges in the game, and they've been made more difficult. I mean, the changes we previously had was like kill two mans with a riffle. 
We also get more renown, which is great for the players that need it. So some bug fixes that are worth mentioning are that they have fixed the rubber banding when an operator moves through a breached wall. This was prevalent on the map border, especially on the second floor. When you breached a wall with thermite and try to run through it, you would get sent back to the entrance hole. This would continue no matter how many times you tried to get past it. Also, impact grenades are now able to destroy both sides of the wall. This has been a big problem with these new toys, and I'm happy they upgraded from the Kmart brand. Light also took yet another change, and will no longer blind or hinder a player from the inside. This has been a plague to every single player for the past few months, so I'm super happy they fixed this. There are a bunch of other changes, but none are significant enough for me to discuss. If you want to check out the whole list and missed it, then be sure to check the description below. We won't be seeing any other operator ability balancing in this patch, but we should be receiving some with the mid-season reinforcement patch. Hopefully, Lord Chonka would get a buff, but only time will tell. The last thing I wanted to discuss was the new skins that are out. We got three crazy new skins featuring new in-screen animation. We also got some black uniforms for the new Japanese operators. While I think these things are okay, I don't really care about reporting on them. I feel that if you want the new clothing or weapon skins, then buy them. They help keep the game alive since all the DLC is free, and we're getting another year of DLC and not a Siege 2. I mean, if they made a whole new game, I don't think people would be too happy about that. But most skins you're gonna lock via free renown anyways, all you gotta do is just play. Now I'll probably be getting most of them because I wanna continue supporting this amazing game. So hopefully we get something like an all black matching uniform or something like that one day. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys. I'd like to know your thoughts on these patch notes. So be sure to leave a comment below. If you guys like this, I'd appreciate a quick thumbs up. Let's go for 22 likes this time, guys. And if for some odd reason you really liked it, then go ahead and smash that subscribe button like it's hot. Expect more gameplay featuring the new operators Echo and Hibana in the near future. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.